Now, with the news that some international travel will be allowed to restart from Monday, many of you are dusting off your passports oh, yeah. and stocking up on your sun cream, ready for your first holiday abroad. Hurrah! Mm. It's been over a year since you've been away, uh, but it's not just passengers getting ready to take to the skies. Yeah, pilots, obviously, many of those could have been grounded, so they're using flight simulators uh, just like this one, flown by Captain Al Bridget at BA's Flight Training Centre, oh, wow. which is near Heathrow. Keep the old skills honed and sharp. Stay frosty, baby. Uh, Going to be speaking to Captain Al in just a moment when it's safely in the air. It looks so real, doesn't it? No. Uh, first, though, if you're planning a trip abroad, but confused by testing rules and even the places you're allowed to go, yeah. don't worry. We've got our very own captain in the studio today. Ali Spear captain. is here to tell us everything <laughs> we need to know. Welcome, Alice. Lovely to Thank see you. you. Looking so beautiful. Uh, what travel? <laughs> what travel news is actually changing from okay. Monday? So what from Monday, much anticipation and much celebration. Quite rightly, that we are going to be allowed to travel again. So that in international travel ban for holidays is being lifted with lots and lots of caveats. So right. this is the UK government has said that people from England, because this is obviously a devolved issue, mm -hmm. can go abroad and come back into areas that are on the green travel list, OK? Now, that's 12 countries that are on that list at the moment, and that will be changed uh, every three weeks. So um, we've got Australia, Brunei, Falkland Islands, Faroe Islands, Gibraltar, Iceland, uh, Israel, Jerusalem, New Zealand, Portugal, importantly, Portugal, and the Azores and, the Faro and Madeira, um, Singapore, South Georgia, uh, et cetera, et cetera. 12 different countries on our amber list. Um, the First Minister of Wales has said this morning they are going to advise against travel for holidays. Really? Yes, until the 30th of May. But mm -hmm. they know that they can't stop people going to Bristol and getting on a plane or going to, you know, to um, Manchester and getting on a plane. So they are advising against it, but they're not making it a rule. They're not saying you can't do it. Scotland, we're still waiting for Nicola Sturgeon to make uh, an announcement. But there is a massive but. So there are two things to consider. One is this green list is about places you can go to and come back to the UK without massive restrictions, without having to go into a hotel yeah. to quarantine, which is what you'd have to do if you're on the red list, without having to quarantine at home for eight days, which is what you'd have to do if you're on the amber list. This is places you can come back to. It bears no relevance to where we'll accept you. Oh. And what we've seen this morning is a huge furore because we are waiting for Portugal to announce whether they will let people from England in. So we're saying, yes, you can come back from Portugal, but Portugal are saying, according to the EU rules at the moment, you are not allowed to go there on holiday until May the 30th. Now, Portugal is one of our most loved holiday destinations, and thousands of people have booked package holidays there. Thousands of people had booked trips there. And, of course, we've got the Champions League match mm -hmm. there on the 29th of May. So we are in a right mess with people yeah. who have booked, who've got holidays coming up over the next two weeks who are now up in air, up in arms, saying, what can I do? Can I get my money back? Sure. It's an issue. Sure. Um, so, for now, please be very cautious about where you book uh, to go to and the rules yeah. for getting into that so, place. So, I guess there's two questions off the back of that. Is that list likely to be relaxed after the 30th? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, three weeks. Yeah, right. Yes, and and the 30th is when the EU are going to revisit. Exactly, which is really the key date in all of this, I suppose, oh. isn't it, in many ways? Because, like you said, it's about us going, being allowed into these countries yes. in the first place. And you have to look at what the rules are for going into those countries. So, say you're going to Iceland and you've got two vaccinations, well, then you can walk in. All right. But there are other countries where you have to do testing. So, for, mo for the most part, to get on a plane, you are going to have to do a PCR test before you get on the plane, within 72 hours before you travel. And is this mm -hmm. even if you've had the vaccine? Yep, absolutely. The vaccine is largely irrelevant for most places at the moment, but you have to go onto the government website and check, and you have to check according to where you're going. You need a PCR test. Now, PCR tests 
um, come at various prices. £120 approximately. Boots is the cheapest place this to find This is not the NHS the lateral street. flow test. You is cannot it? use those NHS. Right. Really? No, 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 absolutely not. They're not specific enough. So they're... Um, uh, so are they redundant or, uh, or...? No, no, they're very important for day-to-day -day going sure. around within our country, but they will not give you access to another, right. to another country. You need a fit-to-fly fit certificate, which you will only get with a PCR test taken 72, within 72 hours of your departure And I suppose date. this is all... Then you get, the, you get the certificate, which is digital, and then you go to the... Yes, but I would there. print it out. If you watch Netflix all the flight and you land and your phone battery's gone down and you've got no proof right. of the certificate, That's you really want to have point. the printing. So what you need to do... Before before you travel anyway, you need a passenger locator form because you're going to get back in. You need proof that you have booked your PCR test for when you return to this country. You need your fit to fly certificate to prove to the country you're going to that you are COVID negative when you get there. If you are travelling through a tour operator... I need a holiday after this. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> if you're travelling through a tour operator, yeah. then they are offering really good deals and the airlines are offering good deals to make that test cheaper, £60, so half price. So go to your tour operator. They will help you get tested. They will help you with the system and they will reduce the price. I was going to say, but where do you get all this stuff? Do you get this stuff via your travel agent or, or, or via the airline? Government website is your by the first website. port of right. call. Absolutely. And you're kind of responsible for doing this. And you must make sure that you allow enough time to do this because the passenger locator form, you have to fill in one for every member of your family and it can take an hour to fill in. Oh, wow. So really a invest And are children exempt this. from this or are children... No, it depends where you're going. Oh it depends goodness. where you're going. Yes. It's a lot, isn't it? Isn't it? It's a lot to think It about. is a lot, but just take it calmly and do your research and you will be absolutely fine. Do you think... Um, I don't know if you if if you know the answer to this, but do you think by I don't know, August, let's say, the summer oh. holidays, do you do you envisage a world where this isn't as complicated? I envisage a world where our vaccine on our passport is going to count for an awful lot in many many countries. But for now, day to day, this is we are just hanging on to the you know opinions of people like Portugal, who are at the the mercy of the EU sure. uh, presidency, saying what we can and can't do, and it's a ridiculous situation. Yeah. So book your PCR tests, make sure you've got your paperwork. Yeah. And have an amazing holiday, everybody. Have a wonderful time and travel where you can, when yeah. you can, carefully. Uh, thank you, Alice. Um, Alice. OK, so we've been told he's now switched to autopilots, flying at a cool 40,000 feet. Uh, Captain Al Bridger, how are you? Thanks for joining us. Hi, oh, I'm, I'm fantastic and thank you so much for having us. What a pleasure to be with you this morning. Oh, it's so lovely. Um, so you're obviously in the cockpit now. Are you actually in the air? I can, I can see they are actually in the air. Is yeah. Dave flying so we're next in, to you we're there? in one of our, our multi, yeah, our multi-million pound uh, simulators, and they are just like the real thing. So we're over the top of you, actually. We're just flying over London at the moment, um, and as you can see, it's incredible. We, you really feel like you're in the air. These are amazing pieces of kit. You can literally go from this, as I did recently. I've just changed aircraft types to fly in the actual aircraft with a training captain and passengers, customers straight away. So the training here is, is absolutely amazing. So, Captain Al, what do you, what the pilots and, and cabin crew, need, how, how, what do you need to refresh uh, being out of the game for so long? Yeah, I guess the first thing to say is that we haven't been out of the game. So we've been, we've been flying throughout. Uh, we've been flying, obviously, at limited customer services, but we've flown uh, cargo, you know, PPE, medical uh, equipment around the world. 12,000 tonnes in the last year we've done. So the pilots are still exposed to the operation. We've got these simulators. You should, you should come and see it. It's amazing. Oh, There's 15 of them lined up here. They're multi-million pound simulators. And the joy for us uniquely is that we own them. So the pilots can come in. They can come and book them any time they want. And they do. We've got a, a community-led um, pilot uh, scheme where the pilots can book 24 hours a day and they can come and practice and jump in here and hone their skills. And they do it all the time. I've met some this morning. It's amazing. So um, and so you can keep on top of your game. It's amazing. Passengers, passengers don't need to be worried about you not flying in lockdown. Is that right? We don't need to be worried about travelling. Uh, don't. Please don't be worried at all. You know, I can understand people might be apprehensive, but the pilots are so professional. I'm so proud of our pilots. They keep on top of the game. And even when they're not in these amazing simulators or, or flying the aircraft, um, you can still think through it. I mean, I, people think I'm mad, but I, I'll sit in an armchair at home and, I, and I'll think through my checks and procedures. And I know other people are doing that. We have a, 
a pilot I bumped into this morning whose wife's a pilot with us as well. Do you want me to? And he was saying over the dining room table, they'll talk about their procedures and things. It's amazing. They're yeah, that so right, professional. That it's wonderful. It's looking a little bit dodgy. Have a word with Dave there, will you? <laughs> <laughs> well, Dave's flying it. I mean, I'm looking at you. If I was flying, I'd be looking out the front. He's like turning, a he's you. turning. So I've left it to Dave. I'm not looking what he's doing, but it's amazing, isn't it? What a, what a fabulous piece of kit. Absolutely and now, do you amazing. Have to, you do you have a certain have amount of hours? Incredible. Do you have a certain amount of hours that you have to uh, kind of brush up on, uh, like fly before you're allowed to get back in a plane? Does it not yeah. work like that? Uh, that's a great question. Um, so, in terms of hours, not really. The, the regulation says we have to do. Um, three takeoffs and landings in 90 days. But we, with everything in British Airways, we go above and beyond the regulations. So we've said that all of our pilots need to be at the controls every 35 days. Um, and then some of our pilots have changed aircraft type. I, I came off a 747 last year onto the, the, uh, the 777, did a course in here, as I say, and then offline the aircraft. So, um, yeah, we're here, we're up, we're ready, and we just can't wait to, to welcome customers back. Thanks, Al. Thank you, Al. Thank you to Captain Dave as well. Thank you. Thanks, Dave. Oh, well, it's, a, it's a pleasure. Yeah, it's lovely to be with Don't you. Turn around, we Dave. can't wait to give everybody... <laughs> a, 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 we can't wait to give Dave, everyone eyes a on the prize. British Airways welcome back on board. <laughs> Thank there you, you guys. Have a good day. Oh, yeah, Take care. Exactly. Bye. Thank you so much. Lovely to be with you. Thank you. That is what you want in the captain, isn't it? It's that so is cool, the guy. Yeah. You literally I want him to fly me. Yeah, all the time. They look so fun, though, Sim. Presumably, you can just go, should we go to New York? <laughs> <You know? laughs> oh, <Fly> simulators. <laughs> so much fun. Brilliant.